has to do with their metabolism, yeah, definitely. Not necessarily slow them down, but it, it made them drowsy, sleepy, affected their vision, made them slightly blurred vision. Okay, and as a result, had difficulty picking up the ball, used to get out on the slips. You bring Alderman on, he picked them up all the time. Okay, whereas at the start of the match, no, much more sharp and alert and tended to get through that period. So, diet plays a major part in cricket. So what was the difference in diet from side to side? That was mostly carbs. Yeah. This is protein and good fats on this side. So we would have chicken salad, fish and salad, no, no bread, no ice cream, no juices, uh, no pasta, no rice on this side. Okay, that side, as much as you like, boys. Okay? <laughs> And it worked. What about things like uh, nuts and stuff like that? I know yep. Josh brings a, a swarm his board lunch, opens it out, and nuts and all sorts of stuff in there, powders and what sort of supplements like that could they have on your Certainly nuts. Cold um, meats, cheeses, things like that. So we're going to talk a little bit of nutrition for five minutes because of all the areas of sports science that have been, well, have not improved in the last 20 years, nutrition is the one. So I think weight training, sprint training, technical training, mental training has all improved significantly in the last 20 years. Right, it's made huge advances and differences. Bat technology, equipment technology in cricket, Huge advances. The one area that hasn't advanced is what you're eating as an athlete. What, you, what fuel you're putting into your body. So your liver is your fuel tank. Okay? It's like a petrol tank and you go to the shell and you fill that up. Now, it has a set capacity. Every one of us is a little bit different. Boys, your capacity is still growing. Right? You don't, you're not born with a set capacity. Your liver grows and stops at about age 16 or 17. So most of you, the capacity is still growing. But for your age group, you hold around 50 grams. So your capacity is around 50 grams. And I'll explain what a gram is in a minute and what, say, a banana's worth. Right. So, parents. If your fuel tank is full now, and you drive out the gate and the petrol price has gone down to 90, right? how much fuel can you fit in here? You're going to stop and fill up? No, you can't, because it, your gauge already says it's full. Okay? So you can only put fuel into this tank when you've made some room. So if it was half full, then certainly you go and make use of the low petrol price and you put another 25 grams in to fill it up. Yep. Now, the body works best, your body works best when this is half full. Half full. Not when it's full to the top. So, and uh, what I haven't said yet is what <coughs> is stored in the liver. And it's sugar. Now don't be confused because the word sugar right, means carbohydrate, starch, fructose, lactose, all of those things are broken down and into sugar. So sugar is a fuel, is your fuel. It's one of them. You have three, but it's, it's one of them. And what I'm trying to say here is there's a very small capacity to store that sugar. Okay? One banana is worth 25 grams. Okay, two slices of bread are worth 30 grams. And I'm saying, so two bananas and it's full to the top, I'm saying it should be 50% full all the time. <coughs> so that trigger, the start of the day, half full. If it's full and you put more fuel in, that's what will happen. If you go to the petrol station and it's already full and you try and put more fuel in, what will happen? Overflow. You'll get an overflow. So
So that's what happens with the body. Body goes, no room left here, overflow. All right? Now, there's only one place there can be an overflow. It goes into your blood. So you now have a high blood sugar level. And it makes you drowsy, sleepy, lethargic. Your reflexes get slower and you make poor decisions. Not, not a good feeling if you're opening the bank. Or if you're wearing people or standing at first sleep. It's not even a good feeling if you're the opening bowler. Okay. Now, as coaches, or as a coach, this used to frustrate me the most. Because I would swear I'd prepared my team perfectly leading into the match. Okay. And the first 20 minutes, I'm not saying cricket, it could be hockey, it could be football, it could be AFL. First 20 minutes, my team went out and played like crabs. They were terrible. The decision making was poor. They dropped the ball. Okay. They get out. We were three to none. Okay. I couldn't understand what we'd done wrong. Because my preparation for the team was perfect. But I wasn't controlling what you were eating at home that morning. So I'll pick up one boy. What do you eat for breakfast pre match? So what type of cereal is it? Wheat bix or? Okay. So a bowl of cereal, bowl of cornflakes is worth 40. An up and go is actually worth 60. And a banana is 25. So if you had all that, you really had 125. So if there's no one in this room with a, with a liver that holds 125 grams. Like the largest in the room is around 100 grams. And you've already tried to put in 125 for breakfast that I'm telling you will be sluggish, lethargic, you won't start the match well. Okay. So how do you measure the liver? That machine over there. All right, so we'll do a demo in a minute. Right. Um, but it, and we know that 50 is the maximum capacity for here. All right, so what I'll do, I'll give Graham a list of all the carbohydrates that are commonly eaten by our children and us. And you can get a gauge and say, okay, what makes up 25? What should I then have? For, what should I have for breakfast as a pre-game? Parents, what would you think? Two pieces of toast make up 30 grams. Too much. That, now, you're assuming already that this is empty. I'm telling you, when they wake up in the morning, that's already full to the top from the meal you gave them the night before. You passed a load of rice or bread or potatoes or chips or that from the night before. Okay. How much has a, a power rate gone out? Do you know? You got it? 60. What would be like a ball egg? Zero. So proteins are zero. Fats are zero. <laughs> Nothing. Zero. What do West Australia have? Zero at lunch. What do New South Wales have? About 120. So they would go out, sleepy, lethargic, sluggish. Okay. It was even better if they were in the field. So they went out to the sun, and we'd, we'd pick off 160 or 170 for the session. Because our batsmen had had zero at lunch. Okay. Our liver's only half full. We're picking up the ball early. Okay. Everyone else is lethargic and sluggish. Does that make sense? So as parents, you may have seen this in your child already. You don't understand why they, were, they started the match so slowly. Or it took a while to get into the game. Or made basic, simple errors. I don't normally do that at training. Yeah, but training's at the end of the day after they've burned a lot of energy off. Okay, the match starts the next morning after you've put 125 grams in. Nobody makes simple errors and gets out early. Right, can't focus properly on bowling the right line and length. Misses easy catches in the slips. And cricket is the one sport where you need really got good eye-hand coordination. All right. If you're having foods that are interfering with your vision, your depth perception, okay, and your hand reflexes, it's not going to make a difference. It's going to make a huge difference if you can get this right. So we'll go back to Damien Martin's story again. So he did listen to me. He did change his attitude. He dropped his weight from 84 kilos to 68 kilos. He actually looked too lean and too gaunt. Everyone thought he was anorexic. He wasn't. 
He probably, he was having zero carbohydrate, which is not enough. Okay, that's why he lost so much weight. But he won player of the year that year. Okay, not international, probably should have made international player of the year. Right? They won the World Cup that year, he and Ponting had a huge partnership in the final, and he blitzed. In fact, the whole Australian team went on, the, on that eating regime because there were six West Australians <coughs> in the town at the time, and John Buchanan said, what are you guys doing? Like, why are you eating this way? And the whole team went on, okay, for that period of time. They didn't measure anything, okay, but they went on the way they felt, and you'll feel significantly better right, if you control what you're eating. So, I would suggest for breakfast, rather than cereal, toast, orange juice, something egg-based, could be bacon and eggs, on one slice of toast, right, then you're only putting 15 grams in and not 125. Could be baked beans, could be spaghetti, could be um, nuts, seeds, it could be a muesli with no dried fruit in it. Okay, so usually something that's egg-based. Um, lunch, it's really what you would put into a sandwich without the bread. So it could be ham, cheese, chicken, um, sliced meats, the salad, without the two slices of bread or the three slices of bread. Without the wrap. Without the chips, without the can of coke. Because right, you don't need the sugar. Okay. Tea time. What do you have, Smithy, here? <laughs> I'd like to say I had salad, but I yeah. enjoy the party sauce. Right. So if you just have the meat and not the pastry, that'd be fine. All right. But tea is a trap for cricketers. Right? It's they a come big in, spread. They, it's a smorgasbord. Okay. So I, I used to lock I, my club in Perth. I, if the bats, my batsmen were batting at the time, I'd lock them in the change rooms. Right? And give them some water, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and not to eat. They weren't allowed to come in the change rooms and have anything off the table. Okay. Similarly, what about fruit? Fruit, fruit's fructose, fruit sugar. So, twenty-five. Watermelon. Watermelon one of the better ones. Yep. Um, there's only four grams, but these are per hundred grams. So there's yep. only four grams, like in hundred grams of watermelon. Yep. Um, everyone goes bad for you. It gets into your system really quickly, so it's a good thing, and not much is going in. So strawberries, watermelon, anything that's watery is good. Anything that's solid, so all of your grains. Potatoes, corn, pumpkin, um, bananas, rock melon, mango, anything that's solid, no, stay clear. Dried fruits, no water. How so, frequently are the grains in your liver dried? Depends on your metabolism. So, right, now, if you, a lot of you are standing in the field and you're not active, okay? You can stand there all day and not do a lot of running. Okay, so it's dropping very slowly. Contrary to that, you could be a fast bowler and using up lots of energy. So the first 20 minutes, so let's say we're overloaded, okay, and then after 20 minutes it dropped down to here, now I'm working perfectly. So your first spell could be terrible, you come back from your second spell and you feel a lot sharper, you've got a better rhythm, you're breathing better, that's all to do with this. It's not, you haven't suddenly got fitter. Nothing's changed except you've used up some glucose. Right? That's when you get through that really hard, difficult first 20 minutes, and then all of a sudden, the ball seems that big. Right? Looks like a football. And, and runs are coming really easily, and you're in a groove and in a rhythm, and off you go. That's because you've used up the extra sugar. When I, ran a, when I had an AFL football team, all the midfielders would come in two and a half hours before the game started. We would measure them with that machine. If they were too low, then I could give them some fruit to bring their level up a little bit. But if they were too high, they started their warm-up half an hour before everyone else. So once they got onto the field, they were there, right in the good zone. So they were sharp, alert, right from the first minute, the first whistle. Rugby league is more important because they run straight out. They don't have a warm-up period basically on the field like AFL. So if you started to hydrate more earlier, yeah, bring it down? Uh, no, no, you can't flush it out. You've got to use it up. Right. Yeah, you've got to burn it off okay, somehow. So the best thing is don't put it in the first place. Mm. But if you have overloaded, then you know you need to yeah. not keep, keep going back to BP every two hours and putting another 20 litres in. 
right? Refrain from that and burn off what's in there, which might mean just changing your eating for the next 24 hours, okay? Naturally, it comes down, you start to feel better, and then you introduce the 25 or the 50 grams back in. If you're running marathons every day and, and using up a lot more energy, well, you need more than 50 grams, but most of you aren't. You're not doing that. And I, I can speak as a parent to Friday night after a big week of work, you'll pick up something on the way home, we're not cooking at night, and bang, there you go, there's your Chinese meal or whatever it is. And it mucks the next day. And your poor kids the next day are going to go out and play sport. So when you talk to your kids the next day about their performance of sport, you might not have helped them the night before as well. So, And I know I'm guilty of it too. I can even see all the great boys eating different for the next couple of weeks. That's tonight. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Give you the edge. The other thing that gives you the edge, profit. So this is a cell, and in that cell you make energy. So you, everyone needs good energy for exercise and athletes. So you need fuel in here, so you need some sugar, and you need some fat. And what happens is a cell is like a fire that's burning in you, in you, and you have millions of them. So they're just little cells, little fires. Boys, if you have a fire going, all right, and you stop the oxygen flow, what happens to the fire? It goes out. Is that, was, the, was, the, was that your answer? Yeah. Yeah, it goes out? Okay. So you need oxygen to get into there to make good energy. It's really important. Now, we're all breathing the same amount of oxygen right now. It's in the air. It's 21%. So that machine over there measures, I know there's 21% in the air, it measures how much goes into that cell and then how much comes back out again. So let's say it was 13% came back out. How much does the cell use? This is good for your maths, boys. 8%. Okay, good general maths. Elite athletes, 8%. Okay? What if it's 18%? How much is being used? Only 3%. This person's not getting enough oxygen into the cell. So to be a good athlete, you have to get more than 4%. Okay? And closer to weight is better. So good marathon runners are 8%. Okay? And I'd be aiming for elite level athletes 6%. That's really important. So there's, there's nothing stopping any of you from getting these scores. Okay? Oxygen's in the air. You just got to get it into your in through your lungs, as long as you don't have asthma, which is stopping and blocking, okay? It goes into the cell, and then we measure what's coming out. However, for that to go into there, pass in, you need a particular, you need to be eating a particular food, or food group. 